All right. So hello again, I'm uh, Sean and I'm here with Colleen Anderson, the assistant principal over at Paul Kane High School. And we're uh, going to talk uh, in this section about uh, the pandemic effects on student learning related to learner fatigue this year. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, definitely an important topic to talk about. Our kids have been through a lot and their learning has definitely been affected quite a bit. So I think it is an important part of the conversation. So question for you to start us off, Sean, is how have students learning, how has students learning changed this year? It's well, it's been uh, it's certainly been a tricky year and it's been tough for teachers as well as students and parents. And I, I there's been all these things that I think have had a, an impact on learning, uh, it, you know, in surprising ways, like just this move from the from going to a semester system to a quarter system has had a real impact on a lot of our kids. And that that changes up what their year has looked like. It changes up if they had any spares during the year. Then instead of a spare for a block, it's now a spare for uh, for half a day, and so they're missing out on on a lot of that. And so it makes some uh, some quarters really heavy, and then some really light. So I think that's been that's been tough. We we've had this emphasis on things other than curriculum in the schools, and so we generally think about schools as the main goal of school being to educate kids, which is certainly an important important goal. This year, there's been so many extra things that have come in. There's been a lot of work by staff on uh, on just things like sanitation rules around how do I set up the desks in the right way, and a lot of emphasis on things that don't really go along with curriculum, and so it's made it. It, it, I, I worry that we haven't gotten as much of that academic learning this year as we would in an ideal year. All that said, my sense is that we'll be able to pick the things, the, the specific things that are missing are things that we're going to be able to pick up in future years. Is that your sense in, in a high school setting too? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you did touch on definite things that we've noticed in the high school for sure. I think, you know, talking about this, the quarter system versus the semester system this year that we've traditionally had in high school and what we're used to or what kids have been used to, um, you know, sitting for two and a half hours, I don't know about you, but that's a long time to learn mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, never mind when you're 15, 16 years old, having to sit and really have um, a, a long period of time to, to sit and engage your brain and really learn. So, so naturally, that's going to be harder um, on anyone. And so, yeah, we've definitely seen where those mornings and afternoons uh, that would normally have been broken up with four classes over the course of a day are now only two courses that they're taking. Um, so teachers have had to be quite creative in terms of really making sure that they're mixing up the way that kids are learning during those times, right? It's not, you know, an hour of instruction and then an hour and a half of sitting and learning, right? So we really do need to be thinking about how to get kids moving. I know many of our teachers have incorporated things like a, a natural walk break in the middle of their class where they'll take their kids out to get fresh air, to, to move around um, and, you know, not be sitting for an entire afternoon, for example, in the classroom. So that's just one way to try to overcome that long period of time. Like anything, there's pros and cons, right? I mean, For our sure. kids that, uh, you know, are experiencing sitting in, in class that long, they really are taking two classes instead of four. So although they have a longer period of time that they have to be sitting and learning, they're able to focus their attention on one or two courses, depending on what they're taking. So, you know, there have been pros and cons, but never mind. you know, definitely have seen, I would say that it is hard on kids, which is why we're you know, looking to go back to a semester system next year for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's yeah. it's one of these things where we get to experiment and try out different things, different strategies because right. we sort of had to. So now we you, we have some good information about which is better, semesters or quarters, and it mm -hmm. sure seems like the consensus is that probably the semester system is better for most of our kids. I think so. Yeah, so, in the long term, for sure, for yeah. the kids. I, I think and as well. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, just I think as well about the. With schools, our focus is on academics and what is the education, the information that they're learning. But there's also these soft skills that kids are getting in school as well. The ability to interact with others, to do group projects, to yeah. uh, things that they don't necessarily get marks on in terms of making friends, making connections at recess. And I know when I've gone into schools, it's been different this year. Uh, 
in that our kids are, they've adapted surprisingly well to this. I, I remember thinking in September, wow, how are kids going to manage this? The kids managed it, I think, better than a lot of us as adults did. But I feel like it was really it was really quiet in a lot of schools, especially in elementary schools, that there's not that, not that joy and that rambunctiousness that in some ways as adults, we try to tamp that down a bit. But now I think we need to bump that up probably come yeah. next year, making sure we have that fun. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, it's like that energy that you find when you come into a building, right? What, a school is not just about sitting in desks and doing work, right? School is a, a place to socialize, a place to be with your peers, a, a place to interact with other people, to have cultural events and, you know, community events. And and uh, all of those things have, you know, really impacted the way that kids are able to, to be with one another and adults too, right? The staff. So, um, you know, we just, as an example, we had a new staff member Member start with us this week and and she commented to me how quiet the building is right <laughs> and not just because kids are sitting and learning but just that the the air in the building is quiet right because kids are in their classrooms they're not moving about the halls because they can't right the, yeah. the rules are strict and and we can't have them you know interacting out of their cohort groups as we call them so that definitely has had an impact on them because as we know you know their their healthy their mental health and being happy and being able to interact with their peers outside of class is what makes school fun right and a lot of those fun elements of school have unfortunately been taken away as a result of the pandemic so you know looking forward to getting back to those fun pieces again I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's such an important point for us as adults to think about is that this is when kids go to school, they're in a job that they're kind of locked into for 12 or 13 years. And we would like for them to have fun while they're there. We see fun as kind of a secondary piece to the learning. The learning is the thing that's important that will let them be able to be successful as adults. But having fun while you're doing it, I wouldn't want to be in a job that I couldn't quit for 12 years that I hated. Right. That's not that's not good at all. And so we also, for certainly for kids as they're getting into high school, our goal often is that they're going to go on and do something post-secondary uh, from a, a training perspective, whether it's university, NATE, apprenticeship, or whatever. But we want them to be able to be lifelong learners and not see the whole thing as horrible. Mm -hmm. Sean, do you think that parents need to be worried about the situation we're in? I feel like it's fixable and, and that we need to be aware of, uh, just aware of where our kids' mental health is, how happy they are, and what they're doing to increase their own happiness during, uh, during the day. So there's that piece of it. Academically, I feel like everyone has probably fallen behind to varying degrees. One, one thing that helps me not worry too much as a parent is that even if I know that my kids have missed out on things, everyone else's have, every, everyone has missed out on some of those things and we can pick those things up. So they're not behind relative to their peers and just knowing that this is going to be one of those years. And I think for our parents of grade 12 kids that they're, this is, everyone knows as they're going on for next year, if they're doing applications, this is a weird year. So yeah. having that awareness that everyone is going through the same thing, I think is, is important. I feel like just for our kids too to know that they are that they're not alone in this, that everyone is struggling with the same kinds of things, whether it's academically or social or uh, in terms of mental health. And so making sure that they know that there are others around that are that are having these difficulties and that there are ways that you can address them as well with uh, with academics. You can certainly get support with tutoring if that's what you wanted. Uh, from a mental health perspective, you can get that, whether it's with a professional like a, a psychologist or a counselor or just in uh, in things that you do around the house. How do you find, how do you grow your own happiness and joy? How do you have a, 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 a an approach of gratitude in the house? I feel like you can always catch up on content that was missed. Like that's always something that's solvable. It can be a hassle. You may have to do some stuff during the summer or a bit of uh, a catch up remedial stuff in the fall, but that's always a solvable kind of problem. Yeah, that's right. It's a good point because, you know, even though it's not normal to be in this place that we are, it's everybody's normal now, right? And and so I think that normalization of it, right, and, and making people feel like, yeah, you aren't alone, right? I think it's important to acknowledge that there is loss here, right? There's a grief and loss type of situation that our families and kids are going through. We all are, right, with the loss of some of the things that we, what life used to be and what it is now, right? And I think if kids feel, teenagers feel, and adults feel that, you know, they are all 
all in it together, that that can really help them to um, bereave that loss, right? And and really to know that things will get better and, and that we'll get back to doing those things again. And they'll be able to learn in the ways they learned before. So um, hoping that and knowing that it's a temporary situation we're in is important. Yeah, that temporariness is so is, is so uh, crucial because we are when we're in a valley or when our our uh, mental health or our happiness is low, you can feel like it's never going to get better. But it when you're in a valley, by definition, it gets better. And we have some really good reasons to think that the fall of the, the summer of this year is going to be better than the spring. Fall is going to be better than last fall was. There's a lot of reasons to be optimistic. I think about like if I look at a. a, a chart of stocks, for instance, like when we look at it and it kind of goes like this, when the stock is going down, it sure doesn't look like it's going to go up, but that's what, that's what typically will happen is that it's, you get these, you get these valleys where it looks like it's just, it, it, it's just doing terrible. And that's when it turns around. So I feel like that's true for our own emotional functioning as well. For sure. And how do you think that parents can manage their own expectations about the situation? I, I I think making sure that we keep our expectations at that appropriate level, that this is not going to be the best year of anyone's life, really. This is going to be a year where we kind of trudge through it, but we have a lot of optimism about what next the next school year and the next year are going to look like. And so I have to be careful to check my own perfectionism, which can uh, affect how I respond when I make a mistake. But I need to check that for everyone else because we're all feeling that fatigue. We're all tired. We all, it, it seems like, you know, you don't do anything during the day and yet you're exhausted. So when that happens, we're all more likely to make these kinds of mistakes. And for our kids, that's especially true. Uh, with their schoolwork. So expecting things that are, we want to keep I, just these expectations at an appropriate level. It doesn't mean that we just let them do anything that they want, but we make sure that they're doing uh, that when they get a mark that's a little bit lower, we're not really hitting them as hard as we would necessarily check in our own perfectionism because all of us are operating at about 80% capacity right now. That's true. And there are, of course, those rare exceptions of kids who have really thrived in this style mm -hmm. of learning, right? Mm -hmm. But they're definitely few and far between, right? The majority of kids typically have found this to be a very challenging time with their learning. And so I do think it's important for parents to, to just stop for a moment and think about, you know, how difficult it is and for us in our own work lives, our lives every day, you know, just the challenges that we've faced um, as adults in, in living in society right now and, uh, and what our kids are going through in a school environment that's very different from how they've been educated all these years previous, right? So I do think it's important for us to continue to be aware of that um, as parents and remind ourselves of that all the time. I like your point that there are that there is that minority of kids who have done really well with the video, uh, the online approach, or the the changes in how schools look. For those kids, I worry less about their academics though, and more about their social growth because these are kids that probably don't miss the social because that was stressful for them. Now they have an excuse to not engage in any of it. And so that's been all right for them this year, but that doesn't, they're, they're not getting that growth that they would otherwise get because we only get the, that sort of growth when we're challenged a little bit, when we have to interact with people that we don't know very well, or maybe people that we don't like very much. That's an important life skill to get to. So absolutely. Lots to be thinking about. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah. John. Awesome. Thanks, Colleen. I appreciate it. You bet.